Okay, part two of the video. So remember in the last video we were talking about having two people, uh, pretty much the same pair of person, same uh, equity to the uh, uh, chance of survival with birds and everything. So do you treat those person even if they have a high chance of, of, of uh, survival but they're using a lot of your supplies and or you decide not to treat or you decide I'll just treat one of them but then where's the try? So you're starting to see and the reason I did those scenarios is that those are the kind of question that you'll have to end and hopefully with those two videos that I'm doing what you're going to have to start doing is I think you'll have to start sitting down with the people that, so either that you're going to start doing some survival with the community sit down and have serious discussion about maybe even have a ethical ethical board so for example um, I have three person that are have different backgrounds for whatever reason um, and usually an uh, a unequal number is better so for example three five uh, seven uh, the reason is that uh, you won't have like a half or, or four and half or against there's always going to be like for example three two will be four one will be against or two four and one's against um, so it will uh, always have somebody that is going to have to make a choice on one side or the other to take a decision and then your decision will be made so maybe even in those communities to have like ethical um, community uh, and so in our case again uh, if you decide not to treat someone then you have to start asking a question about um, a palliative care and palliative care is not really discussed about in many forms that I discuss about but it is a question and again, palliative care is not putting a pillow on someone and killing them. It's to try to um, treat them as best as you can, but um, letting, uh, accepting that debt will be imminent. And with uh, trying to provide to prolong less uh, their their life. So, for example, and some people will extubate or will remove them from life supports so that they can have a ding. A, a, um, a nicer death if you know one but um, but they won't prolong we won't prolong their life by giving them medication or trying to uh, keep them alive longer than they need to and so we'll let the process of death kind of take over doesn't mean that they will suffer and actually even more those people will give even more pain pain controls and everything for that and so um, those would be um, good discussion to start uh, wondering if you're going to be the medical support about your community, your family, or anybody, um, to sit down. Have a, uh, so for example, with your family, sit down. What would you, if this happened, what would you do? Um, would you put somebody in quarantine? Um, what do you want me to do if this happened? Would you uh, like to have this? Because there is no right or wrong question. And this is why it's called ethics. It's because there's no right or wrong, or wrong questions. It depends on your religion. It depends on your, your beliefs. It depends on um, um, your experience of life. It depends on the situation. It depends on a lot of stuff. And so there's no, um, if this, this would do that. Uh, it's really sitting down knowing what people's everybody's like uh, beliefs and everything so for example uh, one big ethical con uh, uh, that com keeps coming back in the healthcare business is for example um, people for religious be belief that do not want a transfusion well it's your right to refuse whatever you want for your belief because it's your right to believe uh, whatever you want but for example if you bring your child and your child would survive receiving the blood transfusion. Um, so now the parents are saying, no, you do not um, give blood to my child because of my um, religious belief. But then you have the healthcare professionals like, well, as my duty as a healthcare professional, I need to provide the most care about this person. And this person is not in his, so for example, he's two or three years old, is not, it doesn't have enough um, knowledge or mental capacity or or, or or maturity to make that kind of decision like do you want the blood test or do you want the blood transfusion or not and so those will become ethicals because both sides are right but which one you're going to choose um, and again 
there's no right or wrong here. There's no line in, in between and stuff like this. And so that's where um, a lot of hospitals, especially children's hospitals, have like ethical boards and everything to take those kind of decisions because so they'll sit down. So that could be like a good option for you to have over here. And again, I'll put uh, some links down to uh, have some discussion to provide like some supports and or things that you can start thinking about. Uh, the other one, like I was saying, is palliative care. And on palliative care, this is the one that uh, you're gonna have to start asking people. For example, what do they want us? What they want you to do um, if they if they die or if they're about to die? Um, so, for example, another condition that I can see here. Um, let's say you have someone that is have severe uh, respiratory disease that needs home oxygen. Um, at home and we'll have a video on chronic disease but uh, that requires oxygen at home at the whole time well if you're at a major crisis and there's no supplier of oxygen what do you do do you want to die do you want me to let you go do you want me to bring you closer to the hospital and actually leave you there and us will continue to, to do uh, something do you want me to drop you uh, so, so I know those sounds a very hard question, and they are hard questions. But there are questions that uh, we cannot uh, ignore because they are actually a reality. Um, and if you look at things like Katrina and things like that, those were questions that were asked. Like for example, if you have someone on a ventilator in a hospital, um, but has more chance of, of dying than a new person, than a younger person that comes in. Do I remove this person to give the ventilator to the person that has more chance to survive, or do I leave it to this person that is about to die? Who are we to make those decisions? But actually, someone has to make those decisions. So as a rule of thumb, is always that um, the grade of many is better than a grade of few. But again, there, that is... A rule of thumb because like again in the example that we have so if we have someone that has a lot of knowledge so for example if you live in a community uh, survival community or something is your I don't know your blacksmith or your engineer that basically runs the whole thing and knows how everything works and everything uh, that person may require may we may spend a little bit more uh, energy and more resource to try to keep this person because this person being surviving or this person uh, getting better will provide benefits for the survival of the groups. Uh, does that mean that those people um, should be all safe? And again, it, it, and that's why in this video I do not want to say yes or nay, yay or nay, because there is no really answer. It's just mostly questions. It's questions of stuff. It's principles that we need to sit down. And each scenarios, uh, each uh, family, each uh, units of survival that you you're gonna form, it's gonna need to ask their questions and uh, serious questions and sit down and have those those things just like any preparedness that you need to do that's more mental preparedness but um, like I know some expeditions for example uh, if they die to bring their body somewhere it is a hard to carry so for example if you go in places like Everest there's actually bodies there like there, there are even some places in books or stories that you read, you know, like after uh, the man with the uh, blue suit, you turn left, and on the green suit, you turn left, because people leave them there, because to bring them down would take more resource and put more people at risk of dying than to bring them down. So dead body are left over there. In some expedition, that's one question before you leave for the expedition. There, uh, there are asked, uh, what do you want us to do with your body? Do you want us to dump you in, in a crevasse or do you want us to bring you back uh, to have funerals and stuff? And again, it depends on, on your belief and everything and stuff. Um, and nobody can answer those questions for you. Uh, so it is a, I think it is something that you really need to sit down, discuss. And I wanted to bring that with an example, a concrete ex example, so that you can um, sit down and unfortunately there's not a lot of resource out there uh, beside like learning about ethics and everything because everything depends on you it's you that decides what it's going to be or 
the people around and you each person needs to get their their things and even that the scenario may change everything so for example another ethical dilemma that you can think so if somebody is stealing um, so you have two people they're stealing so law wise they're all breaking the law but this one is stealing to feed his family and this one is stealing for fun so ethically so the law says those two are the same category Ethically, you probably can make a case that, look, he's been pushed. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. So ethically, you maybe have a better reason than this one that is not doing. But some of the people would say, no, 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 that the same thing is they're stealing is stealing. And there's other ways that you can you know, feed your family and things like that. So there's uh, there's no right or wrong. We could sit down here and discuss and, and have uh, things. But uh, what I wanted to bring more was... Like I said, a real discussion about, about those two topics. Uh, and I'll put links again that you can help. Um, but I have serious thoughts about that. And uh, especially for pain. I see a lot of people like, you know, um, heavy on, on the, um, the bandages and the suture kits and things like that. But not heavy on the pain control. It may be a little bit more important to to do uh, pain control than anything else because without pain and in pain you won't you won't go very well uh, far and things like that's like you know like uh, burns and things like will be very painful fracture will be very painful especially with it outside a hospital setting where we can you know reduce your and put stuff in your legs and things like that so uh, pain will become a major. Uh, major um, actors in this and we'll we'll do a video I'll, I'll do a video on on that subject as well so anyway i wanted to give you those those questions and uh, hopefully it was not too dry but it was it head takes is never really a fun subject to talk about but i thought it would be very important of where we are right now because the rest of our um, care will be affected by that decision of that trying to always each decision we're going to make when we're going to for example talk about triage and uh, this is the what's called the start and the jump start and we'll talk more about those triage uh, those tools will be part of, of taking decision and always about putting your resource for the best use meaning that saving the most people that you can and sometimes it doesn't mean saving number of people but that means as well as for example saving a someone that is important and 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 um, a big support for the rest of the survival of the rest of the people and so sometimes you have to put your emotions aside and, and your desire to have one person to, versus uh, other people so anyway i'll let you with your talks don't uh, hesitate to um, send me a message if you need to and we'll talk to you